This is one other strategy that we are employing uh, part of this, this initiative that you hear us frequently talk about, um, our focus on driving down our gun violence and gun crime in, in the city and in the county and, and, and in the Midlands. Um, this year we're seeing some promising results, um, a little short of two months into it. We've, we've seized 110 guns, that's still a lot of guns. Um, 39 of those guns have been stolen. We've had 48 um, leads generated from our knob and entries um, and also promising uh, three shot spotter alerts um, have led to um, several knob and leads which has led to suspect identification which has led to um, rapid federal case adoption and that's this process is is what we're trying to um, continue to improve upon and um, and, and again create um, more actionable leads in a short period of time um, putting um, guns in in the hands of um, our prolific offenders to be able to make cases and remove them from the community have the community impacts um, I, I'm joined obviously by um, Sheriff Lott and uh, ATF SAC Vince Pelosi um, he's going to talk about the ATF um, gun tip line program and why we think it's going to be impactful here in in the Midlands so I'll turn it over to Vince good afternoon and thank you everybody for coming uh, first and foremost as the chief said we're we're here to talk about a violent crime reduction initiative uh, but first let me say uh, as the special agent in charge of ATF we handle both Carolinas North and South Carolina and with that uh, we have a pretty robust presence here in Columbia and Richland County. Uh, and with that, we're always eager to talk about opportunities like this where we can combine our resources uh, and our investigative strategies, and this is just one example. Uh, with regards to the initiative, uh, we kicked it off uh, a couple of weeks ago via billboards, as you heard the chief say. We've got two billboards that were strategically placed uh, throughout the city. Uh, those billboards have information on it, particularly a tip line. Uh, the billboards will remain in place for approximately three months. The tip line will remain in effect indefinitely, and, and that will be funded, this initiative will be funded by ATF. Uh, what we have found that in, in a lot of these investigations, uh, especially as it relates to violent crime, the public has information, and it's critical information, but oftentimes the public doesn't want to come forward. So. Uh, the tip line offers uh, the public a place to start, number one, if they don't know. Uh, and number two, it offers anonymity should they choose. So th this initiative has been done in other cities uh, throughout the country, and it, and it has proven to be successful. So uh, anytime the public uh, is willing to come forward with information, uh, ATF is willing to provide rewards for that information. So uh, again, uh, this is part of a strategy. Uh, I, I think it's always good to uh, be in partner with the uh, Richland County Sheriff and, and the police department. So uh, You heard the chief talk about that we have been talking about uh, gun violence that we have. We just don't talk about it. We take action. And today is one of those action items that we're doing. Uh, we want the public to be involved in this. Uh, the public has to be part of any program that we do in order for us to be successful. And, and this is one way that the public and the community get involved, they can call us. They can call that tip line, give us that information that, that we can react to it. The only way we're going to solve the gun violence problem that we've got in the Midlands is by us working together. And when I say us, that's not just ATF, the City of Columbia, and Richland County. It's the community. They have got to be a strong partner in this too. And, and what we all hear is that the community is fed up with gun violence, so they're ready to take some action. This gives them an avenue to be able to take that action by calling in those tips. So, again, we talk about gun violence, but we're also we're also working to stop the gun violence, and that's working as a team. All of us working together, we're going to accomplish so much more. So, ATF has um, been a great partner with us. This is just one of many uh, programs that we've got going on to address gun violence, but this one can be very effective when the community gets a part of it. So, I'm asking everybody in the community. You see something, say something. Call that tip line. Let us know about the guns. I would just add ATF has been a tremendous partner with this. This would not be possible without them. We do think this is, um, we're certain this has been very successful in other communities. Uh, I think what we're seeing here um, 
you know, time and time again with, um, with our strategies as we are, um, one, being blessed with um, support that we're seeing in some of our larger cities here in a medium-sized city like Columbia and, and, and Richland County, and, and we're benefiting from those relationships. Uh, I'd also like to point out to you, as we continue to try to, to bring awareness to, you know, to our gun uh, crime issues, you know, we often, as I started the pre this press conference up, we throw out numbers to you all the time. Uh, numbers that we think are very staggering, but we throw them out so often, I think sometimes they kind of lose their impact with, with our citizens when we talk about, you know, 800, 900,000 gun seized. But um, this is something that we're trying to do to uh, kind of put things into context. We're doing it internally uh, amongst um, our officers and we're, put, we're pushing it out through social media and, um, and, and on our website. But when we seize a gun, we're, we're taking a picture of it um, and we're putting the location where it was seized from. And, and again, we're trying to put, kind of like putting a face with a name, we're trying to put a gun um, with a number. And it's, um, to me, it's pretty alarming when you see the, the type of weaponry that we're taking off the streets and taking from people. Um, and that's why it's important that we identify our prolific offenders and make these impact cases. And we, the only way that's possible is with these partnerships like this. We think this tip line is going to generate uh, more information that's going to allow us to put um, good solid cases on these prolific offenders and, and hold them accountable and, um, and put them in prison. That's where they need to be. So if anybody's got any questions, we'll be glad to uh, take a few questions. In most cases, the, the reward would be commensurate with the information that's provided. So for example, let's just say uh, somebody had information uh, regarding an individual that was you know, on a certain street corner. Uh, if they called that tip line, uh, that they would be asked certain information, describe the individual, you know, does that person have a, a firearm? Uh, but usually in those types of cases, if that were to lead to uh, the recovery of a firearm or a prosecution, we generally start uh, as low as $1,000 up to $10,000. And, and, and I think that's worth repeating, $1,000 to $10,000, that's a lot of money. Um, we know we have some recent homicides on Norman Street. Uh, we know we had dozens and dozens of people that witnessed somebody discharge a firearm, shoot somebody, kill somebody. Um, we had the uh, uh, very high profile murder um, the, uh, the previous year on Gervais Street. And uh, again, probably estimated 100 people were potentially witnessed that shooting. Um, you know, up to $10,000 reward here for information leading to, it surprises me. Um, I, I think you know a lot of our officers that are on the line working it every day. They're they're unfortunately uh, anybody that's that's you know um, you know worked for the last ten years in this area. Um, this is you know an unfortunate trend that we're seeing. Um, I think we're finding um, weapons now that, uh, that they have higher capacity. Um, you know magazines, semi-automatic weapons where you would find smaller caliber or revolvers. You know from in years past, and of course you. You know, we come across the um, high, you know, high-powered assault weapons too. I think what's surprising and disappointing to us is the people who still leave their guns in their vehicles and leave their vehicles unlocked. We're having a lot of that. You know, that can help us out tremendously if people would just take the guns out of the car <coughs> or lock the cars. Uh, we don't have car break-ins. We just have car going ins. They'll just open, unlock car, go in there. There's a gun in it. Uh, we can stop that. The community can stop that by just taking your gun out of your car and keeping your car locked. That will help us. That's probably been the most disappointing uh, aspect of this is that we've been talking about it for quite some time now and we still have that almost daily where somebody goes into an unlocked vehicle and gets a gun and ends up on the street and then somebody's shot by it. Hey there, Mayor Steve Benjamin here. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you give it a like right below the video and don't forget to subscribe. Also, while you're here, be sure to check out one of our other videos or follow on our social media platforms. Thanks again, and remember, we are Columbia.